you all for staying to the end. I'm not going to punish you by reading a seven-page poem in the slowest possible voice I can. <laughs> I'll just read section three here real quick. <laughs> so this poem is called Rhapsody for a Child of the Sagebrush, and it's um, based on a poem actually by uh, Ben Gunsberg, Professor Gunsberg. Um, you are not that child of sagebrush anymore. You are not the snowy nightgowns of Utah's mountains that strip themselves clean during summer, or the salt flats always saturated in winter white, or the water rod of the great salt lake that perfumes the shores and towns old enough to build next to her receding waters. You are not the snow that seeped into the cavities of your heart so slowly that the passage of time numbed until all you could ask for was cold, cold, cold. You are not the rock walls of the canyons that shaded you from the sun, or the mountain lakes with diamond waters that drank the snow, or the little reservoir whose shallow waters hid drowned deer, birds, and stray dogs, or the big reservoir up the road that had fish in it you could not catch, even though others pulled gleaming trout from her bosom like rabbits from a top hat. <coughs> you are not the goats who munched on alfalfa in the afternoons of austerity, or the cows giving birth under the lamplight of stars, or the horses neighing in the dreams of speed, or the tree that bent the road as it lifted up the edges of the asphalt, or the forest where every tree had a human name, or those same trees that were toppled down by the winds that zipped down the mountains into the valleys on skates of sleet. You are not the alleyway that pulled up water into puddles you stomped through during summer, or the roof of the shed you ate lunch on while you watched the dogs sulk in the backyard, or the flat rock pathway that led to the front door that was evened out with sand, or the three-tiered gardens surrounding it where velour petunias mingled with lilacs and daisies. You are not the corn stalks that give birth to sunshine we ate with salt and butter, or the deer with stoic faces that snuck into town to steal it, or the mazes of corn eerily crooning when the wind blew, or the green blades of grass that wiggled between your toes, or the apple trees that were so overgrown with green fruit that the branches practically begged you to pick a few. You were not the swim trunks gone stiff from the salt of the lake when you swam in it, or the ink of the newspapers that rubbed off onto your fingers when you threw them onto doorsteps in the early morning, or the metal extension ladder that shimmied in the wind when you climbed to the roof of the house to put Christmas lights on the trim, or the green strands of those lights that had cancer warnings printed on the labels, <laughs> or the fireworks of July illuminating the nights with imitations of stars, or the sprinkler pipes that water sloshed out of when you carried it over wet rows of emerald alfalfa, or the brown couch that sagged in the middle when you collapsed on it, or the glowing lamp that sat next to your bed. You spent quiet nights under reading Jack London. <coughs> you were not the high school band who played music in your yard on your birthday, or the cold silver of the trumpet you played with them for parades, or the dirt pass of cross-country races that led the runners into the scent of Canyon Dew, or that first kiss you tried with your girlfriend who has disappeared from your life like autumn leaves, or the last smile of your grandfather and the last hug of your grandmother that rings out like a bell in your soul when you dream of them or all of your brothers and sisters and friends who no longer sing the songs of childhood you once shared with them, or your mother and father who were so slowly touched by time, you scarcely noticed they had become sunsets. You were not the last time you really looked at the little hills of sagebrush outside of town and heard them serenading the sky in syllables of dawn, believing that even if you could not, the sagebrush would live on forever.